We are gonna make some muscadine jelly real quick like real quick this time. My other video, if you've never seen how to make jelly and you want an hour long video, go to mine that says purple hull jelly video. And that'll give you an hour long. I'll go into great detail how I do all this. But um, this is some muscadine juice that um, I had already made muscadine jelly for the summer. And Mr. C. Snyder saw some on a dirt road he rides on and he picked me some more. Let me rinse out my my pan I'm gonna make this in. I'm always making sure nothing's in it. I just want jelly, jelly, jelly. So anyway, he picked me some more muscadines and I was not gonna waste that juice. So all I have is like a half recipe. But we're gonna make it. We're not wasting it, are we? So what I mean by half recipe is this is two and a half cups of muscadine juice. And all I did was put my muscadines in this pot actually. I'm gonna get all this good juice. Hang on now. And I just covered my muscadines with water. I mean, just covered. And if you have um, a big, big jugs of bottled water, that's even better. That way, you don't get any of that uh, chlorine or anything like that. that. I love using the bottled water on it. But if you don't have it, don't no, worry about that because I don't always have that either. But anyway, um, I'm gonna make. I just covered my berries, just covered is what I mean, and like not big old pot with a few berries floating. So that way you can have a real concentrated juice. And I bring it to a boil and then I turn my fire off and I cover it. And I will let it sit overnight. I let it kind of steep in that boil, burst your little berries open and lets all, lets all of the juice steep overnight, gets it real flavorful, then I drain it in a strainer and I also put it in cheesecloth and they'll tell you, some jelly makers will tell you, do not squeeze that cheesecloth and get all that good juice out of there because you might make your jelly cloudy. But I squeeze mine because I want every bit of that juice, okay? But um, I'm just telling you the right and you know, the different theories. So um, that's how I get to this. I squeeze mine and it does not make my jelly cloudy, never has yet. And even if it does, I'm gonna eat my cloudy jelly. I mean, it's gonna taste the same and I didn't waste any juice. So anyway, this is a half recipe. So we've got two and a half cups of muscadine juice to get to what I've just explained you get to that point. Um, and one tablespoon of lemon juice. And I do use this real lemon, 100% lemon juice concentrate right here. If I can get the lid open, I'm gonna use it. And I'm gonna do one tablespoon. Normally, my recipe is five cups of the muscadine juice, so I'm going, and I'll do two tablespoons of this, but this time it's one. And I'm gonna go on and I'm gonna put the recipe, I'm gonna do a, the whole recipe like I normally make. I'll put that in the comment section because some of you will wanna know the recipe and say, will you take a picture and all that, so I'm gonna start putting my recipe in the comments. And normally, you will put seven cups of sugar, and this is two and a half, so we're gonna go three and a half cups of sugar, huh? <laughs> we're gonna go half, half, half. So we got one right here. I got my big old thing of sugar during jelly making season. <laughs> I'll show y'all. I really get me some sugar here, you know? <laughs> Cause you gotta have lots of sugar. Two, three, and about a half a cup of sugar. Okay, and that's where I start right now. We don't put any pectin. Later, I'm gonna put one package of liquid pectin. Normally, I put two, but you can have these recipes, you sure can. And muscadine is my favorite. I do believe it's my favorite, or at least one of my favorites because, I'm gonna get this on the fire, y'all, and I'll bring y'all over here with me. So I'll keep on working. I wanna do this in a quick jelly making recipe. I don't wanna be forever for y'all. But if you wanna be on the forever one, you go find my purple hull jelly. Cause it's an hour long, but I'll show you everything you're gonna need to make jelly and go into like cooking school mode and we go through everything. I don't even remember what I was telling y'all. Maybe I'll think of it in a second. <laughs> I wish I could tell me. I wish I could go live, but 
our internet out here in the country does not allow me to go live. No, it does not. We got hurricanes coming in. That's exciting, isn't it? I guess, if you want to call it exciting. I think we all stayed kind of a little on the shell shock side here in Louisiana after Katrina. We're just, I guess we're assuming the worst or wanting to be prepared for the worst because Katrina was really, really, really bad on, on the South in general, not just Louisiana. I was looking for my, my jelly making spoon. <laughs> Joanna Wilson got me this when she would come over here and be my jelly making buddy. Okay, I've turned the fire on, y'all, and I'm going to bring this to a boil. And like I've told y'all in my other jelly making video, the recipe will say bring it to a boil for two minutes, then add your liquid pectin and boil it one more minute and jar it. And I do not do that because I've done it before, and it never set up because every berry's got different amounts of pectin in it. Um, and those qualities you need for jelly making soap. I'll show you what I do on here. I kind of make sure it's going to make jelly a little bit. Like right now, it's just liquid, watery liquid. So I'll show you what I need it to change to. But I'm going to turn this off. I've got my jars over here in my big pot. They're good and hot in my lids and my rings. And you need to at least let them boil for, or on just a low boil for 20, 10 minutes, and mine always go way longer than that while I'm getting this to go. But I'll come back on here and we'll get this going together. Okay, y'all, this is my muscadine. I'm gonna show you how it reacts because each one you make reacts differently. You see how it's really wanting to just bubble up. See how it's, and it'll come on up and go over if you've got it in a shallow pan. So that's why you do a really, really deep pot. Um, I learned that the hard way. It's like candy on my stove. But anyway, you see that? And he's only been going a couple of minutes, and he's boiling, so it's time to put that liquid pecking in there. But he's got a lot of jelly-making quality to him instead of that purple hull, so that's why it's not taking but a couple of minutes to get him boiling and just a couple of minutes to boil. And I'm putting one package of this liquid sure gel pectin what I was telling y'all is that I believe muscadine is my favorite, or one of my favorites, and it tastes like a lot like grape jelly, but way, way, way better. Um, now I've got to bring, return this to a bowl for a minute, but we're still gonna see. And yeah, you see, y'all see this? I'm gonna show you this. It's already starting to candy up on the side a little bit, or gel up. And so you can tell this is gonna make jelly real easy. And so you can stick to that two minutes of boiling and add your liquid pectin and then one minute of boiling with your liquid pectin in there and it's gonna make. But like I say, muscadines are real good at making like you don't have any trouble. My um, purple hull, you know, has zero pectin, natural pectin in it, so it takes forever. You see, he's getting back up to a nice bowl and real easy and real quick. So we let that go about a minute and then we're going to start jarring it up. What I was telling y'all though, I love it and it does taste a lot like grape jelly. And actually I've seen muscadines reading about them referred to as the American grape. So just to give you an idea of what it might taste like, it does taste like a lot like grape. And so I guess it would be the American grape. Y'all see, he's just vigorously boiling, boiling, boiling. Okay. And I want to show y'all too, like I did on my other video. Let's see if I can get y'all over here to see him dripping. You see how it's, let me get this real, real, real close. You see how it almost looks like it's, it's, you see it's jelly in that drip now. See, it's so, that way you know, and I mean, that's gotten very, very, very angry. You see him? So it's time to turn him off of there and look at the sides. You can literally start scooping jelly off those sides like that. So you know we're good. So this is where I get rid of this one spoon. Put him in my sink, and I'm going to put y'all back down over here. 
so y'all can sit and watch me jar up some jelly see if I can get us down on the same I tell you I need me a camera person don't I I know I know we always need something aren't we all right y'all let me go up one time to show y'all everything this is a little jar picker upper that came in a kit from Walmart. I know you can order them on Amazon too. So that way it doesn't burn you. As y'all see, that is hot. Hot, hot, hot. Put him back over there. And then in that kit also, you'll have a funnel like him. Back down in my hot water. I have washed him. But I make sure. And he's got a, a wide mouth on him. He fits right down into this jar like that. And you're able to keep the outside of your jar clean, on, especially up on the rim of your lid, because you want that to seal really, really, really good. Now, see how calm back down. And now, a lot of people will scoop off. Excuse me, y'all. Let me let him outside so he'll put. Come on, Jack. Go get it. Get it, get it, get it. Go on. Get it. Goodness gracious. Jax, he's always got to be in my videos, doesn't he? <laughs> Barking like the bad dog he is. Something I want to show y'all, too. Y'all see this foam on the top? Let me dip some up for you. It'll form on the top like that. It tastes just like jelly, and there's nothing wrong with it. Now, a lot of people will skim that off the top first, okay? Because they want their jelly to be pretty too and I do like my food pretty but my husband actually told me his grandma did not skim that and he would rush in there if it was a fresh jar of jelly to open because he wanted to eat that foam part off the top <laughs> so for John Murray's sake I leave it on there but that's up to you now if I know I'm giving it away I don't because I don't want people to say oh look what she did so I'm just wanting to tell y'all and like I say, the reason why I know this will gel easy is because literally I can go along the edge right now and I can scoop up some jelly already. So I know we're not going to have trouble. As a matter of fact, y'all, let me taste it. Let's taste it and see what it tastes like. Mmm. <laughs> All that needs is a hot biscuit to go with it. That's it. That's all it needs. All right, y'all. Let's get it jarred up. And I this scooper also came in a jelly making kit. I guess you could use a ladle of any kind, though, if you can't find one of these scoopers. And I'll see how much goes in one of these jars. Let's see here. A little more. And when you're making jelly or anything, actually, when you're canning anything, you need to leave a little headspace. And some recipes are real particular about what kind of headspace, meaning the headspace is like inside the jar to the top of the lid you're going to put on. And that could use a little bit more just because I've made jelly so much I know it can take just a little more in there. So let me give it a little, maybe like another tablespoon and bring him on up. Yeah, just about like, oh my goodness, that's so hot, y'all. Let me, let me pick this up with some of my paper towel. See how he is just down in there. It leaves a little space there for your lid to actually seal and stay sealed properly. And then this comes in one of those kits too. It is a magnet on the end and it's fabulous for picking up your lid like that out of your hot, hot water. And you actually don't even have to touch it. And then you put it down here onto your jelly jar and then you pick up one of these rings, same way, put him on here. And something I didn't show y'all, I forgot. Normally I'm in here by myself concentrating. I take a dry towel and I'll wipe. Y'all saw I used that um, 
funnel, but also I take a dry towel and I wipe really, really well and make sure there is nothing, absolutely nothing on the outside to cause that not to seal. You need glass to seal. And then just tighten it with your fingers, okay? Do not go back and tighten it more later after it's sealed. Don't like over tighten it because you may cause it to unseal. So that's it. And then I'm just going to sit him right here on a towel and let him cool. And don't push that top down. Right now it's up a little. It's kind of... And he will seal on his own and pull that on down in there. And you'll hear him pop like... And it's just a wonderful sound. Let you know you did it. You know you did it and you did it right. And like I say, once he does that, do not screw that down tighter or anything like that. I know people that have done that and uh, then it come, like I say, it breaks the seal. And a lot of our, my grandmother would remove that um, circle ring after that. She would remove it and use it on her others and everything, but I don't. I'll just leave mine on there. I think, too, you can tell if it comes unsealed better than if the ring's on there, but I've just never had any trouble with that, y'all. If I did, maybe I would do that, but I've just never had any trouble with one coming unsealed. Um, so, I just don't do it. Let's see. I need a little bit more in here. Just a little. There we are, now let me wipe really, really, really clean. And dig out one of my lids. And I got lid and ring all together that time. There we are. Use this to screw that down because he is hot, hot, hot. All right, y'all, I'm gonna show you how pretty he is. Isn't that pretty? Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And that's it, y'all. I'll come back on here when I get all of them done. I thought about something else I do want to tell y'all that I have done with this muscadine before. I worked at Union Vet Clinic up there for Mary Beth and Bat Brantley for years and years. And um, I would be making this during the summer, and Mary Beth would want sugar-free. And Melissa, Melissa Abernathy, she would want some sugar-free, too. So, um, I have made this with Splenda, is what I'm getting at, and I did it, Splenda says on its container or bag, you can do it cup for cup, just like you use white sugar, and I have, and it turned out, and it was good, so, just so you know, you can do this sugar-free, and what, the one I used that I know for sure was the Splenda, and it did just fine and perfect, so, that is just another thing to let you know you can make sugar-free because I know a lot of us out there might have somebody we love that's diabetic or we might be ourselves and we still want some good jelly that reminds us of days gone by, huh? And so, there you go. You can do it sugar-free. So, I just want to let y'all know that. I'm still canning up. I'll be back. One last thing I want to tell y'all. I was able to do four jars just with that two and a half cups of juice and I think those are half pint jars I think I think anyway um and this happens to me many times you'll just have a piece of a jar left and you're like well I can't because if you try to seal him and put him in your cabinet that's way too much head space and he'll seal sure enough but then he's going to come unsealed and he'll be sitting in the cabinet and you won't know it so um what I do is this is my first jar of jelly that I will put in the refrigerator. And then it'll keep forever in the refrigerator. Well, I mean, you know, not forever, but it won't it won't go bad and keep while you're eating on it. Let's say that. So anyway, I just want to tell you that. Don't think that, oh, well, I guess I'll just throw this away or what do I do with it. I don't want you to seal it and put it in, say, oh, it's sealed and put it in the cabinet because it's not going to stay sealed. And I don't want you to throw it away because it's so good. So this will be... Our first one we'll eat on, we'll just have him right here in the refrigerator. And I'm going to let him cool down first out here because he's so hot. I don't want him bringing my top of my fridge down. And then I'll stick him in there. And he'll be the first one we eat. And so nothing will go to waste. One other thing I want to show y'all is I find these. I find these at the grocery store at Walmart. It's some little um, 
labels to put on your jars and I don't put them on like how they show it. I put them on the top so I can read them, but you can put it wherever you want to, can't you? And I don't put them on right now because I might accidentally push down on my lid where he's needing to seal and seal him and I don't need to do that. He needs to seal on his own. So I will not put them on until they're nice and cool, but I'll go on them right out because I've got four or five jars. So I know I need five labels. And these are actually cool. They're dissolvable later labels. And sure enough, if I put them in my dishwater, like once we've used that and I want to wash it, that label comes right off of there. So, and it, it literally just kind of dissipates and dissolves in the water. So these are some cool little ones. And one time I couldn't find any left in the stores um, late summer. So I found these on Amazon too. Y'all know we can find anything on Amazon, can't we? And so I think that's about it, y'all. If y'all got any questions, you you're welcome to ask me. I know several y'all will. Y'all will private message me or even comment, you know, and I'll answer whatever. But I hope y'all enjoy it. <laughs>